Well, well. If it isn't our latest West Point prodigy, I'm Master Sergeant Watson, and I'll be in charge of your training. This is the National Training Center, where you will be finalizing your officer training. At West Point, they taught you how to be an officer. Here, we're gonna teach you how to fight. We'll start out with the control of the battlefield camera. You'll use the WASD keys to move the camera. So why don't you show me some of those West Point skills by moving the camera around for a bit. Press the A key to move the camera to the left. Good. Now press the W key to move the camera forward. Good work. Press the D key to move the camera to the right. Excellent. Now press the S key to move the camera backwards. Well, what do you know? Seems they do teach you some useful stuff at West Point after all. Next up is camera panning and tilting. You do this by moving the mouse cursor to the edge of the screen. Let's start by panning the camera to the left. Do this now. Excellent. Go ahead and move the mouse cursor to the right edge of the screen to pan to the right. Good job. Now move the mouse cursor to the top edge of the screen to pan upwards. Great. Last but not least, move the mouse cursor to the bottom edge of the screen to pan downwards. If you really want to stretch your legs, we have a function called Mouse Look that allows you to look freely around the battlefield. To activate this, you press and hold the middle mouse button. Well done, sir. Now let's get down for a closer look at the terrain. You can move the camera closer to the ground by using the mouse scroll wheel. Try this now. Good. Now try moving the camera away from the ground. Now I'll show you something my platoon sergeant in the A. Shaw Valley taught me many years ago. The mini-map. This gives you an excellent top-down view of the battlefield, allowing you to quickly move to a specific position. By clicking the left mouse button on the mini-map, you can instantly move the camera to that location. Impressive. We have just one more thing, and then we're done for the day. See that red circle? Show me what you've learned by moving the camera through it. Good. Now move on to the next one. Good. Now move on to the next one. Good. Now move on to the next one. Keep this up, we'll get you shipped to Europe in no time. I hear they have a real shortage of junior officers there. You got more spunk than most of the West Point pukes we get sent out here, I'll give you that. Let's see how you handle this next lesson. I'm going to give you command of a Humvee. To issue orders to it, you have to select it first. And to do that, you left click on it with your mouse. If you want to select multiple units at the same time, you can create a selection box by clicking and holding the left mouse button and then drag the box around the units you want to select. Now with the Humvee selected, you can start ordering it around. To issue a move order, select the Humvee and then right click in the world where you want it to go. 
Sir, heading for target perimeter. Good. Now I'm gonna teach you about transports. For this part of the exercise, I'll give you command of an infantry squad along with the Humvee. Select the infantry squad and order the soldiers to enter the Humvee by right-clicking on the Humvee. Fit for fight, sir. Getting a ride, sir. Everyone's aboard. Good. Now, since the infantry squad is inside the Humvee, you can no longer issue orders to them. However, you can move the Humvee around as usual. To unload the infantry squad, simply select the Humvee and click the unload button on the order pallet. Try that now. Want a fast transport somewhere, sir? Well done. Now let's move on to combat. Not for real, though. This is a simulated exercise and the op for will be your enemy. I hope you didn't wet your pants there. To tell a unit to attack, select the unit you want to use and then right click on an enemy unit. See those units there? They don't seem too friendly, do they? Well, what are you waiting for? Light them up! Ready for duty. Covering fire. Will do, sir. Ambush the enemy. Enemy infantry defeated! Enemy defeated, sir! Enemy defeated, sir! Whoa. That's the spirit, sir! They'll fear you in Germany! To really be all you can be in urban warfare, you need to make good use of the surrounding terrain. See that building over there? You can move your infantry squads inside to give them extra protection against enemy fire. Select your infantry squad and move the mouse cursor over to that building. Entering the cursor building. changes to indicate that you can order your infantry squad inside. To do this, you select your infantry squad and right click on the building. Do so now. Good. With your infantry squad inside the building, it becomes much harder for the enemy to spot you. And your men will also take less damage from incoming fire because of the cover that the building provides. Let's see what happens when this enemy vehicle tries to speed past your infantry squad. Sir, the vehicle is neutralized. Did you see that? Op 4 barely got a shot off. Well done, sir. To order your squad to leave the building, select the building and then right click anywhere outside. Reporting in. Moving to position. Good job, sir. Remember to seek cover with your infantry whenever possible since they're a lot more exposed than other units. Now let's talk a little about unit special abilities. They will undoubtedly save your life one day, so pay attention. For this next exercise, I'm giving you command of a Bradley infantry vehicle. Start by selecting the Bradley. Bradley Good. On your order palette, you can now see that the Bradley has two special abilities. One offensive ability, and one defensive ability. The offensive ability will help you kill hostiles faster, and the defensive ability will help you increase your unit's survivability. All special abilities have a cooldown timer. This is the time it takes for the unit to reload the required munitions or catch their collective breaths. This means you'll have to use that think box of yours to decide when to use each ability. This Humvee will only take damage from your offensive ability, so don't bother shooting at it with the chain gun. To use an offensive special ability, you left-click the corresponding button. Do that now. Good. Now left-click on the Humvee to launch a tow missile at it. Not bad at all, sir. As you can see, 
That ability is now cooling down, and you will have to wait a certain time before a new missile can be fired. Some units also come with a defensive special ability. Your Bradley, for example, has a smoke screen that it can deploy to hide from other hostiles. It's deployed immediately when you left click the corresponding button, so don't fire it prematurely. Most units have unique special abilities, so make sure that you learn how each one works. They are one of the main keys to gaining the upper hand on the battlefield. That's basically all you need to know about movement and combat. Keep this up and you'll be graduating from here top of your class. Then you'll face the harsh school of real combat. I'll see you tomorrow when we'll talk about command points and objectives. So you haven't quit on us yet. Today I'm gonna teach you about command points and objectives. A complete understanding of these concepts is crucial if you plan to succeed as a combat officer, so listen up. What you see here is a command point. Control of these points is the deciding factor when you struggle for mastery of a battlefield. Often, capturing the command point will give you access to additional reinforcements as well as shifting the battle in your favor. A command point is colored differently depending on its state. White means it's neutral, that no one is controlling it. Red means that it's under enemy control. And green means the good guys, which means us are in control. To capture a command point, you need to place your units inside each of the connected circles, or perimeter points. And when you've done this, the command point will be yours. Bradley APC here, sir. Moving out. We are ready to rumble, sir. Tracks are moving. Well done, sir. That command point belongs to Uncle Sam. Now we move on to objectives. When you're on a mission, your commanding officer will provide you with a string of objectives which you have to fulfill in order to complete the mission. These objectives come in two different kinds, primary objectives and secondary objectives. To review your objectives, simply open the objectives log by clicking on the objectives button near the minimap. Do that now. Primary objectives are crucial for mission success. Fail one of these, and you will fail the mission. See that command point there? Your new primary objective is to secure it, just like you did in the previous exercise. Armor transport report. Tracks are moving. Armor is ready. Moving is ordered. Bradley infantry train. Moving as ordered. Well done. Primary objective completed, but you're not done yet. As I mentioned before, you will be given both primary and secondary objectives. Secondary objectives are optional, but you should still try to complete them. You won't fail the mission if you ignore them, but promotions and other rewards might be slow in coming. When you complete a secondary objective, you will often be rewarded, and trust me, you will need whatever edge you can get if you're hoping to get by when the shooting starts. Now for the actual exercise. Your primary objective is to capture that command point, and your secondary objective is to eliminate that infantry squad. Get moving, sir. Armor transport reporting in. Hostiles in our sight. Sir. Consider it done. Tracks are moving. Armor is combat for driving two coordinates. Primary and secondary objectives completed. You're starting to shape up, sir. I'll see you here tomorrow for your next lesson. Seems yours.
You're determined to make it through to the end, sir. I guess you're eager to get to Europe and do some good. Today I'll teach you about reinforcements. It's the inevitable rule of war that men get hurt and die. But as a commander, you must stay focused on the big picture and complete your objectives. And for you to be able to do this, your commander will give you access to reinforcements. First off, you need to activate the reinforcement menu. Press the reinforcements button now. Good. Your available reinforcements are shown as points. The left hand column, you can see the amount available. In the right hand column, show you the amount incoming. The available points are ready for you to use. You can spend them on units and then have these units delivered to the battlefield. The incoming points will be added to your pool of available points over time. Each unit has a point value tied to it. This is the amount it would cost you to order down one such unit. That Bradley IFB, for example, costs 750 reinforcement points and about 3 million taxpayer dollars. If you should lose one in action, those 750 points will be reimbursed to your incoming points pool, and after a while, they will be available to spend again. To start ordering units, you need to place a drop zone marker. The marker indicates where the transport aircraft will drop your units. Click the drop zone button. at the mega map. From here, you get a detailed overview of the entire battlefield, but it also removes you from the tactical situation on the ground. Right now, the only thing you can do in the mega map is to place your drop zone marker. Well done, sir. I knew you'd have no trouble with this. With the drop zone marker placed, you're ready to order in reinforcements. You now have 2,000 reinforcement points to spend as you see fit. To order in some units, you start by left-clicking the reinforcements button. Left-click on a unit that you wish to purchase. Clicking on a unit multiple times would add multiple units of that kind. To remove a unit, simply right-click on its icon or left-click on the unit icon in the order box below. You can see your current order in the order box along with the total cost of your order. This amount can never exceed the amount of available reinforcement points. So choose wisely. When you've completed your order, you click the deploy button. Do so now. It'll take some time for your reinforcements to arrive since they're being brought in by air. Plan your reinforcement orders accordingly. Superb job, sir. Only one more day until graduation. I'll see you back here tomorrow. Welcome back to the final lesson, sir. Seems you're made of sterner stuff than I first thought. Today, I'll teach you about the most powerful weapon an officer has in his arsenal. No, I'm not talking about what's between your legs, sir. I'm talking about the radio. With the radio, you can call in tactical aids. They encompass everything from reconnaissance flights to artillery barrages and airstrikes. And they'll provide you with a real advantage in a tight spot. As you succeed on the battlefield by killing the enemy and capturing command points, you will receive tactical aid points. These can then be used to call in tactical aids. Today's your lucky day, though, because you will be provided with a steady stream of tactical aid points regardless of your battlefield performance. And to spice things up a bit, I've ordered the I-4 to place some hostile targets for you to practice on. I know you're itching to get started, so don't let me hold you back. Get to it! Good. To deploy a tactical aid, simply left-click the weapon or aid you want, and then left-click in the world where you want it deployed.
Echo. Fire mission received. Artillery barrage inbound. Copy that. Heavy artillery barrage inbound. Artillery barrage turned the target area into dust. Enemy units in target area got hit hard. Artillery barrage hit for full effect. Roger that. Nice man is in the pipe, armed and ready. Roger. Coordinates received. Tank buster in transit. Nice Come on, man. sir. Op 4 targets destroyed. Superb job. As you might have noticed, it took some time before the tactical aid was deployed. This time varies depending on the tactical aid in question, so you need to plan ahead and analyze the movement of your enemies in order to hit them. Now those targets you just annihilated were stationary, and even a Marine could do that. To be really effective, you need to learn how to hit moving targets. So let's try it again, but this time we'll have moving targets to practice on. Get to it. Ice man here. Mission completed. Out. Roger, Wilco. My laser guided is armed and I'm painting the target. Copy that. Heading towards target coordinates. Ice man out. Wilco. Fire mission received. Artillery barrage inbound. This is Zulu Niner. Coordinates locked down, shells on the way. The airstrike turned target area into dust. Copy that. Those tanks are about to become scrap metal. Hunter out. Copy that. Wolverine is primed and in the air. Wilco, Iceman heading out with cluster bomb. Roger that. Delivering a rain of shells at target coordinates. Bunker buster delivered. Wolverine out. Copy that. Fire mission received. Zulu Niner out. Nice man here. Cluster bomb hit nothing but dirt. Out. The enemy units in the target area are destroyed. Minimum damage to target area. Who gave us these coordinates? Those coordinates were outdated last week. Over. Roger. Close air support bringing in the goods. Hooah, sir. All our four targets destroyed. That was an excellent performance by all standards. Congratulations on completing this course. Only actual combat can teach you the rest of the skills you need, but I'm sure you will make a fine combat officer, sir. Roger, close air support, bringing in the goods. Copy, firing for effect, Zulu Niner out. This is Wolverine, payload dropped at coordinates given. Roger that. I have enemy tanks on my scope. Over and out. Iceman here. I have zero enemy casualties. Artillery barrage was a no-hit. The strike zone was clear. Copy that. <laughs> Heavy artillery barrage inbound.